What's up everyone? Welcome to another video in the tone sample series. Looking for info on how I mix drums? This is the video for you. I'm about to answer that right now. All right, let's jump into the DAW and take a look at how I mix these drums. So the first thing is I want to uh, show you what I've been using for drums, which is the Get Good Drums or GGD Invasion Kit. Um, now there are audio samples on my channel where uh, I have mixed different uh, GGD kits. So you, you can actually mix, say, Invasion with like P4, for example, if you like the snare or the kick um, from P4, you could take uh, mute the snare and the kick in invasion and use the kick and snare from p4 i'm not going to show that in this video maybe i can do that in a follow-up if, if y'all hit me in the comments let me know if that'd be something you'd want to see and i'll do a follow-up video but for this video it's all invasion and and that's what we're going to go through so you can see uh what i've got going on here for the kit um this is bait this is a customized version of uh one of the presets that came with invasion called low tuned brute um specifically the high cpu version so this is my customized version you can see all the individual pieces i'm using here the snare kick the toms all these the cymbals and whatnot so how uh how do the individual levels look for each of these so we'll go through that now so here is the kick and you can see the kick sum, the sub kick, kick trigger, overheads, you know, all the levels going into each of, each of those. So take note of those, the snare, see the snare top, snare bottom, snare trigger, overheads, etc. Note all of those, as well as the spread is uh, up here as well. This kind of adds a stereo effect, kind of makes it sound, well, more stereo, right? Like less mono right up the middle. It just kind of spreads it across both channels, gives it a wider sound. So onto the toms, we have the tom one, two, three, four. Um, and you can see how all of these are leveled as well as going into the overheads, rooms, room, room near, room, uh, room close and room far. And the pan, note the pan and as well um, the spreads. And the symbols, you can see what's happening here with these symbols. So we'll go ahead and jump into the settings and I haven't changed any of the mappings. I know you can do that. I haven't, so all of these should be default. Uh, the cymbal mixer, I have adjusted some of these levels as well. And this is where you, where you can really kind of get fine grained um, with a lot of these. So you have the overheads, the room close, and the room far. And so if you are, if you feel like you're getting too much um, hi-hat, for example, in your overheads, you can pull that down. If you feel like you're getting too much, too many, too much of the toms coming through or the snare, or the kick, in your rooms, whether it's close or far, you can pull that down or even bring them up. Um, so this is where you can really kind of get fine grain control over that. And then that is pretty much it for the kick and the levels in contact. Uh, the last thing I will show is how I've routed these into tracks in the DAW. So right down here, and I'll show actually, if you go to this icon right here and you click this uh, and then hit outputs, it will give you this output section here on the bottom of contact and then from here you click the plus for the output it'll ask you the number of channels the quantity how many you want to uh, uh how many outputs you want to create and i have i don't know what there's like maybe 10 of them or so um, but then for these you can then name each one individually so whatever you want to name them care uh kick snare top snare bottom tom one two three four Hi-hats, ride, symbols, overhead, room, those, that's how I have mine named. Uh, and then from there, once you have these outputs created, you can go into the individual um, indiv individual pieces of the kit, so here in the kick, and then you can select to route however you want to. Um, so you could even go even more fine grain than what I have and route the kick sum, the sub kick, the kick trigger, all to individual DAW channels uh, or tracks and, and adjust those everything from within your DAW without having to open up contact that felt overkill for me so I just summed them all into one output into the DAW track um, and then if I need to adjust say like the the, the kick trigger or the sub kick I can come into to contact and uh, kind of adjust those levels there and then the same thing goes for the overheads you can 
route to the overheads, route to the rooms, etc. And that's the same across all of these tracks. So you can see snare top, snare bottom, um, etc. Right, and then toms, one, two, three, four, cymbals, you can route those all individually. And then that's where things take over in your in your DAW. So we've talked about assigning the tracks. Now you can see the levels I have here in the DAW. Um, so you can see right here are all of the individual tracks, the kick, snare top, snare bottom, tom, one, two, three, four, hi-hat, ride, cymbals, overheads, and rooms. And if you notice this little minus and plus sign down here, uh, right down here, if you, if you, obviously you're not going to see this if you're setting up a new project for the first time after you've just routed all those individual tracks in contact. So how do you get them into the DAW or how do you get them to show up here? Well, you're going to click this little plus sign and you're going to click that for each one of those tracks that you created in, in contact. And then you'll be able to route them all uh, or, or label them all specifically here um, based on the, uh, the output. So if you, if you notice, so right here it says contact three and four, contact five and six, contact seven and eight, contact nine and 10. So you can go open up contact and see those outputs and see which, which channel that is or which uh, instrument that is, where the kick, snare, and then you can label it appropriately. And that's how you set things up here in your in your DAW. Um, that's a quick overview of, of routing. There's a lot more detailed videos out on YouTube. I'll find one and link to it in the uh, description as well. Um, but that's just a quick overview of how to route things into the into the DAW. So the next thing is, uh, like I said, the levels and you can see the individual levels that I have going on here. So starting from right here, this is my drum bus. So all of these individual instruments, if I close this, you can see they're all kind of like summed up in this in this bus. So expanding it shows all of the you know kick snare, all the all of the individual pieces of the kick. And then you can see how I have all of the individual levels set here. All right, so that's how I set the levels for the individual tracks in the DAW. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the audio effects, things like the EQ, the compression, stuff like that. So first thing I will note is the, or I guess the first thing we'll start with is the kick. So looking at the kick, you can see, uh, let me bring this down so you can see it on the screen here. So that is the EQ that I have for my kick. If you have, and this is the, the Slate Digital Infinity EQ, um, if you have Pro-Q, I think it's uh, what by FabFilter or something like that, should look kind of similar. You should be able to, to do these multiple different curves and whatnot in, in that EQ. <clears throat> if you have something similar, you, you can you do it, uh, kind of mimic this as well. But that is the EQ that I'm setting here on the kick. And for the compression on the kick, I'm using Smash and Grab, also provided by Get Good Drums. And I'm using their kick setting, and then you can see the individual settings that I have set up here. And moving on to the snare. <clears throat> so we have the snare EQ looks like that. And again, using smash and grab on the snare for compression. And you can see the settings there. And note, this is set to snare. And then that is the snare top. Here is the snare bottom. So there's the EQ for the snare bottom and then compression for snare bottom looks like that. Again, also set to snare. All right, so moving on to the toms. So looking at the EQ for tom one, we have those settings there and then smash and grab the compressor for the toms. You can see we have that set, the smash and grab set to grab mode and we're on the toms and you can see the individual settings used there and then let's see moving on to tom two you can see the eq looks like that and smash and grab again set to grab mode set to toms and you can see the individual settings on that as well tom three those are the eq settings and smash and grab settings. Again, set to grab, set to toms, and the individual settings set there. Tom four. EQ settings. And smash and grab settings. Looks like this. Set to grab mode, set to toms with those individual settings. 
and moving on to the hi-hat so quite the high pass going on here um, but there was a lot of just lower noise in the hi-hats that weren't really needed there so this just helped clean clean those up so that's my hi-hats um, the ride I don't have anything set on the ride whatsoever as you can see here moving on to symbols so you can see just kind of a high pass happening here on the symbols with a tiny bit of a boost up here I don't know starting at about maybe 5k just boosting them those highs just a little bit and then we do have smash and grab on the symbols as well this is a bit of a custom setting so this is in the advanced mode and um, we're on smash here set with a ratio 10 to 1 you can see the other individual settings there and that's just to kind of bring out some of the sustain in the symbols um, so what I was finding is you'd hear the initial crash but then lose that sustain so setting this with a with a higher ratio 10 to 1 higher threshold um, it kind of helped tame that initial crash but then bring up the sustain of this symbol of the symbols uh, the overheads kind of somewhat of a similar EQ curve to the symbols um, boosting up here again about 5k up through 10 um, with the with the high pass happening there and then uh, smash and grab pretty much the same settings if I if I'm not mistaken they're almost exactly the same with the uh, with the symbols so there's the overheads then we have the rooms with this compression here and we are completely as it says smashing these rooms um, this again is to kind of just bring out that sustain happening in the rooms um, without this you you'd get those initial hits from the this the kick the snare the toms the cymbals you know as you would hear in a room mic but you lose that like beautiful sustain that happens in the room that just really kind of fills out the drums and makes them feel far less um, almost like like cardboardy or plasticky right it, it really fills in the mix um, so as we get into the audio in just a little bit listening to these I'll try to remember to come back and turn this off and turn it back on so you can really hear the difference in that stain in the rooms okay so that is the room the other thing I want to note here is I am using this is just the built-in stock um, logic plugin for the stereo spread um, I add this to uh, a couple places in the drums I add it on the on the rooms and it's fairly subtle um, and I'll try to remember to demo this as well uh, and as, as you can see it is there is a low pass on here so it this is not affecting anything below 680 Hertz uh, so it's just kind of like the higher end of the, you know, the symbols kind of maybe a little bit of the snare but like really mostly just the symbols um, uh, just to kind of like widen that sound even more so there's that stereo spread happening and then that's the individual those are the audio effects that i have on the individual tracks so moving on to the drum bus we can take a look at what's happening here and as i said this over here bus seven is my drum bus and we just have just a tiny bit of compression happening here on the bus um in fact i'll i'll play this here and and we'll, we'll look at the gain reduction it's probably no more than about between one and three probably not even three um, but you can see we have a, a ratio of two to one. You can see the other individual settings here. But this is just to kind of, kind of bring everything together, um, you know, so that it sounds like it's all, uh, you know, more smooth and, and together in the mix versus uh, the individual harsh, harsh pieces possibly like cutting through uh, more than they should. So this just kind of like brings everything together. So we'll do. We'll just do a quick audio sample here and see the gain reduction. So as you can see, it's kind of peaking out at, at minus one. So it's only really reducing at max like one dB, which is almost you probably can't even hear it. Um, if I were to turn this off, you probably almost couldn't even tell. But again, it's just to kind of try and bring that all those drum pieces in the kit together, smooth out that sound. And the next thing is the parallel compression. Um, this is really kind of what adds a lot of the feel to to the drum sound in the mix um, it adds more punch and we'll go ahead and take a look at what's going on here so i'm gonna have to uh, change my screen just for a second so i can show you the drum bus 
Uh, in fact, oh, I'm sorry, not the drum bus, the parallel compression actually. Let me just close that up and I may be able to keep this zoomed in just like that. All right, so this is my parallel, um, my parallel bus for the for the drums. Um, I will note, uh, you're gonna lose that here in just a second, but what I wanna show you is you can see the bus sends happening right here on the kick, the snare top, the snare bottom, tom one, two, three, and four. Those are all being routed into this uh, parallel compression drum bus. So let's take a look at what's happening in this bus. So we have the uh, smash and grab. Let me pull this down so you can see it. We have smash and grab here, um, and you can see it's set to parallel mode. Um, and we'll go ahead and take a look and see what kind of gain reduction is happening here. If I do recall, it's pretty it's pretty harsh. We, as you can see, we are set to smash. Um, we're having where you have the extreme enabled. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a quick look at see what kind of gain reduction is happening. Yeah, you can see it, 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 it almost looked like it was about to almost peak at like minus 10. Um, and that is on purpose. That is because I, I, I don't care about, you know, the transients and, and, and whatnot in this, in this drum bus. This is mainly to try and give me more punch that I can then, uh, in with the level on, on this, on this track, slowly fade it up into where I'm starting to hear more of that punch come through for specifically the kick in the snare and then some of the toms as well. Um, and that is the main purpose of this. So that is why it's totally okay to have this, you know, minus 10 happening. So let's uh, take a look at the other one thing that's going on here in this parallel uh, parallel bus. And again, this is just a tiny, tiny bit of uh, stereo spread happening that again, I can just kind of fade up in. It's not a big thing that's happening because I mean, as you can see right here on this on this track, I'm, it's at negative nine. Um, so it's not something that's gonna be super prominent in the mix. And in fact, this this parallel compression is meant to be something that you 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 dial in and then you start you you bring it all the way down, start playing back your mix, and then bring it up to where you start hearing that that extra punch coming through. Um, and that's really where you want to stop. It doesn't it's not something that you want to be overpowering. Um, so I'm going to go back and just kind of play this and I'm going to pull the, this down and then I'll just play back and start fading in into where you can start hearing and then I'll make it super loud so you can really hear it coming through. Um, but then kind of pull it back down into a level to where I feel like it sounds good. So here we go. Yeah, so ended up right about the same place. Um, it just adds a little bit more punch into the mix, um, and with that stereo spread, just kind of helps somewhat provide a, a, a fuller sound. So that is how I set up the, the parallel compression, or my parallel bus. Um, so let's go ahead and just listen to the drums soloed by themselves, so you can hear kind of what they sound like. And here, is what they sound like. All right, so now we'll go ahead and just listen to them as is in that same section in the full mix again. Here it is. really has a nice good punchy sound to it we're getting a sustain on that really on that snare and those cymbals and from the rooms so uh, let's go ahead and just isolate some of these so you can kind of hear what they're sounding like 
Um, so let's go ahead and start with the room. So this, this is what the rooms sound like isolated. All right, so now I'm going to turn off the smash and grab compressor and the stereo spread. And this is what they sound like without those. Immediately notice that right out, just, just by that simple change, turning those off, you get a lot more coming through from that snare, a lot less from the kick, a whole lot less from the cymbals, and we have completely lost all that sustain. So they're just kind of like quick hits, and they sound, like I said before, um, kind of very plasticky or cardboardy, right? So again, turning on this smash and grab, and then turning on the stereo spread, now all of a sudden we get this immense sustain happening and with that stereo just a very minor stereo spread happening it kind of fills it, it rounds it out more so again we'll hear hear the rooms soloed okay so that's the rooms we'll go ahead and we'll do the overheads as well so here are the overheads soloed. And I'll turn off the effects. So we're turning off the EQ and then the compressor. Again, you can hear how it just loses all that sustain. And again, with the effects enabled. All right, see overheads. All right, everyone, that is it. That's how I put together the drums and my mixes you've been hearing on my channel recently. I hope that answers your questions. If it did or if it didn't, or if you have any other feedback, hit me in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit like and share. Hit that bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.